In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some shocking information on real estate appreciation. I have all the details and exactly what you need to know right here in the video. Let's get into it and talk about what's going on. Right, now, to be fair, in this video, I'm only talking about residential real estate, but I do want to share with you some statistics that were recently released in regards to how much residential real estate has appreciated over the last several years and how much more they're expecting it to appreciate over the coming years as well. Whether you're currently a buyer, you're currently a seller, or you're sitting on the sidelines as a homeowner, this is looking really good. It's like a money printing machine or more like a money growing tree in your yard, right? The one thing that all of us want, one of the two, give me a tree that grows money or give me a machine that prints money legally and um, I think we're all gonna be <laughs> very happy, right? Well, anyway, that's basically what real estate is over the last several years and so far right now and the coming years here as well it's looking pretty good. But anyway, I wanna share with you st the statistics so you can clearly see it for yourself. Now, we need to rewind all the way back to 1990. So here's what they do. They give it to us in 10 year periods of time. So basically starting 1990 through 1999, 2010 through th uh, through 2019, and then again in current times as of right now. So again, they basically give it in a decade time frame as well. But you'll clearly see from the numbers I'm going to share with you right now, it's um looking pretty pretty good. Anyway, let me share with you exactly the numbers here. So going back to 1990, in the decade starting of 1990, obviously through 1999, real estate appreciated at a pace of 30.1 percent during that 10 year period of time. It's not bad, right? I mean, that's honestly really good. That looks like honestly really, really good, right? Now, obviously, when we looked at um, you know sectors or if we look at different financial instruments, like I don't know, the stock market, if that appreciates at a pace of say 8%, well then obviously, you know, it's maybe not quite as great, but you get my point here. Maybe, you know, we got to look at whatever um, investing vehicle or whatever is going to be the best for everybody. But, um, you know, not everybody is uh, investing in real estate either. People are just buying houses to live in. I mean, obviously, that's what the vast majority of people do. But if you're seeing your investment as in your major asset, as in your home, appreciating at this pace, that's pretty encouraging and very um, exciting for a lot of people, right? But anyway, that is the time frame between 1990 through 1999, again, 30.1%. However, if we look at the time frame of uh, 2010 through 2019, guess how much real estate appreciated during that time frame? I'll tell you, it increased, it appreciated by 44.7% during that time. Again, not a bad return in a 10 year period of time on basically something that you're using, you're living in, things like that. Not bad, right? I mean, that's really encouraging for a lot of people. So we're seeing massive prices appreciation. Now get this, back in 2007, now obviously leading up to it, but basically in 2007, prior to the massive uh, real estate crash that we saw then, prices appreciated 80%, okay? That's not sustainable. No wonder why prices uh, declined so much and we saw a major um, real estate crash during that time. Anytime that you see prices appreciate that fast in anything, like stocks or you know, crypto, whatever it happens to be, when you see prices appreciate massively like that very, very quickly, it is not sustainable whatsoever. Now, again, there's more to it, uh, more to the story than just that, but I wanted to point that out really quickly. Again, an 80% appreciation during that time frame, not sustainable. Massive crash coming, look out, okay? But that is not the situation we're in now. Now get this, starting in 2020, so obviously right now as I film this video, we are in 2024. So what, we're like three and a half years into this decade so far. So starting in 2020 until now, three and a half years into this current decade that we're in now as I film this video in mid 2024, right? Uh, real estate prices have appreciated 47.1%. Again, not bad for being only three and a half years into this decade. Now, most of that appreciation came basically the first, you know, I don't know, two years, two and a half years or so. Most of that appreciation came in 2020, 2021, and 2022, right? But basically, as of right now, basically, you know, 2023 and so far 2024, haven't really seen a whole lot of price appreciation because of interest rates being very, very high because of the Federal Reserve jacking up interest rates and um, making it very difficult for people to buy. Therefore, demand is not driving prices higher. That's literally how prices go higher is that demand drives prices higher and, you know, a variety of other factors. But 
that's mainly it, supply and demand, right? Just like every other marketplace that is currently out there, um, anytime that demand outstrips supply, then prices must go higher. Anyway, we can talk about all that in a separate video, but here's what else is very interesting about this. So within all of these reports and all the statistics that I was reading about this, get this, inventory, in other words, supply, inventory is just the word that they use in the real estate market, but it's the same word as, or it's the same meaning, I should say, as supply. How much supply is on the market? How many houses are currently um, available for sale at any given moment, right? right? So right now, what they found is that prior to uh, 2020, when we saw everything you know, really change in a massive way, supply or inventory is down 34.4% right now from where it was uh, compared to what it was prior to 2020. So in other words, supply and inventory on the market right now is massively smaller, massively lower than what it was, what, four years ago or so, right? 34.4% lower now than what it was just four and a half years ago, or basically four years ago, right? That's a major factor, okay? That's going to keep prices high. Why? When there's limited supply on the marketplace and there's equal demand or higher demand, it just simply means prices will not fall. I mean, if prices fall a little bit, they're not going to fall much. They're not going to fall very much at all until these buyers start swooping up every property that's out there because supply is so incredibly low right now, right? That's just, that's incredible, right? So it just shows that prices will remain very, very strong. Doesn't mean the price will continue moving up very high and the, the price will continue to appreciate, you know, um, very, very fast. It just simply means that prices are not gonna fall because there's, you know, vac there's this lack of inventory. There's just no way that prices can fall substantially. Now, obviously in different sectors across the country, in different markets all across the country, then yes, prices can fall, you know, there's different um, different factors that go into every market all across the country, but we're talking about real estate as a whole, okay? But anyway, very interesting. Now, another factor that's going on right now as well, why there's a lack of supply in the market is because a lot of people, in fact, according to the statistics, 80% of people have a mortgage locked in under 5%. Well, as I film this video right now, average mortgage or average interest rates on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage are sitting right around 7%. Now, obviously, they go above and below 7% a little bit here and there, but they've been oscillating right around that 7% range for several, several months now. So most people are locked in. The vast majority of people, 80% of people are locked in below eight, uh, below 5%. Do you think somebody sitting on a, I don't know, a 3%, 3.5%, a 4% mortgage right now is going to say, hey, I got a great idea. Let's sell our house and go move somewhere else and pay seven and a quarter percent. I don't think so, right? The vast majority of people are saying, I'm good. I'm just good right here in my current house right now. I don't need to move anytime soon because if I do, yes, fine. Maybe I can sell my, my house for a nice uh, healthy price. I can have a nice capital gain and I can transfer that money into a new house, something like that. They're very excited about it and feel like they can sell their house for a nice price. But when they look at payments, remember, it all comes down to payments. This is the number one thing that most buyers look at when looking to buy a new, a new property, a new home, is my payment. How much is this thing going to cost me on a monthly basis? A lot of people look at, yes, the price as in it's going to cost me $200,000. It's going to cost me $250,000, whatever it happens to be, three hundred, five hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000, whatever people are shopping at, whatever price range, right? Yes, the overall price is going to cost, but what does it really cost you on a monthly basis? Because yes, okay, fine. You, maybe you pay $300,000 for a house, but the bank is going to finance the vast majority of that. But what you're going to pay for is the monthly payment. That's what most people look at. So that's what most buyers are always looking at, which is the payment on this thing. How much is this going to cost me out of my pocket every single month? And that's what they want to know, right? So anyway, does all that kind of make sense? Either way, I can come back and talk about more statistics about this in another video or future, you know, um, iterations of talking about real estate or whatever you want me to. Let me know. But um, yeah, I found this to be very fascinating to see how much these prices have appreciated just in these 10 year uh, uh, time frames. And again, it's not like we're talking about stocks. We're not talking about crypto. We're talking about real estate, real tangible assets. That's why they call it real property because it's real. You can touch it. Can you talk? Can you touch a stock? Um, you can. You can talk. You can touch like a little piece of paper that basically has your name on it and basically has uh, ownership and dollars invested and um, 
how much money you currently have in that stock and how much it's appreciated and stuff like that. Can you really touch it though? Uh, not really, right? You can touch a piece of, piece of paper, that's it. If you own real estate, you can, you can walk up, you can touch the house, you can touch the garage door, you can touch the front door, you can touch a window if you want, you can touch the siding, you can do whatever you want to it. You can touch the bricks, you can touch the driveway, you know what I mean? It is real property. So very interesting. It's a very, very different asset class than um, stocks and crypto. Crypto, you can't touch it all, nothing. I mean, it's just, it's literally just digital, everything. So anyway, find this to be very fascinating. So hope this helps you out. If you have not done so yet, please subscribe down below, totally free to do so. Uh, go back and check out any of the thousands of videos here on the channel. You can share this video with the share button right down below as well with your friends on my social media. Other than that, enjoy your day. Take care, have a good one.